I'm an engineer and a very mediocre surfer who's decided to travel across the world to see how wave pool technology is changing the future of surfing. Now, unlike me, most surfers on social media will be portrayed as absolute shredders. And then you have people like me who picked up surfing later in life, still trying to find their feet. Today, engineering meets surfing, where we're going to delve into how wave pool technology is really paving the future for the new age surfer. And when I say new age surfer, what I mean is someone who's never really had the opportunity to surf given they haven't been in close proximity to a beach. So for my audience of surfers today, I apologize this won't be your normal surfing video of someone absolutely carving up, but I hope it gives you a bit of inspiration into how wave pool technology works. And to my usual audience of STEM folk and engineers, I hope this might inspire you to actually get into surfing. Our trip starts in our very own country, Urban Surf Melbourne and Sydney, which at the time of filming the clips from Melbourne, Urban Surf Sydney was still in construction. However, both parks will be shown in this segment. The innovators behind this are a company known as Wave Garden, in which we got to speak to one of their very own to understand the basis of how they operate. The cove technology is what you saw in Melbourne, what's being under construction in Sydney, is going to happen very soon in Perth and we're developing all across the world. And the Cove technology is a electromechanical system and it's a modular system. The longer that machine, the longer the wave. 46 motors that are moving a mechanical part, which is a panel. Within the machine, there are various sets of modules or panels, if you like, that move to either side of the central pier. This uses a geared system driven by electric motors, which effectively changes the volume of water equal to the volume of the object that is submerged, in this case, the paddle. As an example, let's use this container of water. If I drop an object in there and drag it across the surface, it effectively creates a wave of its own. However, rather than one continuous push, the wave garden capitalizes on efficient generation by using a set of modules to effectively add volume to the wave as it is generated. What this means is, rather than having to wait until the object returns to its starting position, like what we see in Kelly Slater's wave pool, the individual panels can fire at a specific sequence in which the speed and timing of the wave will dictate what sort of swell you will see in a set, ranging from barrels, clean breaks, and in some cases, aerial waves. With all that set around the technology, let's see how someone like me can work around this engineering marvel, as well as some outside problems I faced upon arriving to Melbourne. Now this was absolutely not planned for today's video, but my luggage got lost in my flight. My flight got delayed by two hours. I missed my session at Urban Surf. Luckily they've rescheduled me for tomorrow morning, so. Um, we've just rocked up. It's currently closed, and I'm assuming that's because the park opens at six, which the first session is at six, so hopefully there's a bit of time for me to get in, get my wet so get my board and go in. Um, but yeah, let's get changed and go catch some waves. Not only does the diamond shape accommodate the technology that's being used, but it offers a point break style wave. Once you paddle along the machine, a current drags you out to the starting position. There are shapes placed along the wall to indicate the takeoff spot for the respective level. Now let's give wave one a go. We're now about to move over to Urban Surf Sydney, which was taken a few months after what you're seeing now, and putting the technology aside, I hope it gives you some insight into how surfing at wave pools can influence your progression. And with Urban Surf now out of the way, it's time to paddle in and fly over to the US for even more, but not before indulging in being a tourist. We're driving to Waco today. Um, just going to the uh, going to the surf park there, so that should be some good fun. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. All 
Alright, so we are now about to enter Waco. We have just driven up from Houston. We're going to go stop and give the car a bit of juice, get something to eat, and then head into the, uh, the surf park, into the surf resort, check in. Okay, we're literally turning onto the road now that uh, Waco Surf is on. In the middle of you know, like it feels like just pure country land. Like if you if you were to tell me that we're about to go into a surf resort, I would say you're taking the absolute piss. Here we are. Oh my lord. <laughs> Guys, there's absolutely no way this place can be real. So I've just checked into my room. Right here, TV, fridge, all the stuff you get in a hotel. That's actually really, really nice. But man, you come out here. Have a look at this. Now this place is absolutely awesome, with a park featuring a ton of fun water activities around the pool, which unfortunately were not open during my stay, the vibe of this place was completely unmatched however, especially with the resort style room with waves just off the balcony. We're now going to look at the more traditional pneumatic type wave, which utilises the pneumatic case on type system. Here at Waco, you can see surfers riding waves in 3 to 4 wave sets, where the wave is generated from within the housing unit in the middle of the park, using technology created by the Perfect Swell Group. Now unlike the Wave Garden Cove, we're not so much concerned with the mechanical machine, but more so sets of blowers and compressors that work with air to push water down the caisson and then releasing to allow the water to propel into the formation of the wave. Wave sequencing is still very much important here, where at Waco what I noticed is the initial plunge brought the greatest power to the wave, which was followed by a sequence to allow the wave to work in whatever formation was in the wave. Now one thing I should note is that wave pool manufacturers are actually very secret about how their technology works and rightfully so. So with the Wave Garden Cove and the perfect swell that's being seen at Waco, take what I say with a grain of salt as I'm only really talking about the engineering principles as I see them. I can't tell for sure the exact sequence that Waco used but in the intermediate settings I did there were three rotating waves and I can only imagine this worked by ramping the blowers up to specific speeds and releasing the air at specific sequences to create all sorts of waves that were available. The wave quality was definitely comparable to my experience at Urban Surf and I would even go as far as to say there was slightly a higher relationship to the ocean here. While both technologies left me absolutely impressed, the real question boils down to the energy efficiency of each wave generator and the subsequent economic viability which the topic is best left to the experts. I would honestly say that wave pools are engineering marvels of today. Given the fact that as a kid I never really took up surfing and it's been a bit difficult to learn later in life due to the unpredictability of the ocean, only catching somewhere between two to five waves on a lucky day and trying to navigate through crowds can be a bit intimidating for someone picking it up a bit later in life. Now for me, I really only started surfing during those first few lockdowns during the pandemic period where you couldn't really go to the gym or do much exercise at all outside of running and cycling and I thought surfing would be the most interesting thing. Wave pools have been very accessible for me, allowing to test myself at a variety of different levels all the way from the beginner up to the intermediate level and hopefully one day into the advanced settings. And as such, it's inspired me to continue my progression which I can then take away and test out into the ocean. There is however one very interesting technology we haven't quite gone through yet. Uh, the quick story that he, um, that he tells is uh, he was skipping rocks with his kids and throwing bigger and bigger rocks and making big splashes and you know showing off and, and watching the little waves peel across the floor. You know, this, as the story goes, it's like, wow, how big a rock do you need? So, <laughs> Meet Surflakes, a cutting edge technology that is not yet available to the public. However, we were lucky enough to speak to the lead mechanical and R&D engineer, Kit, who explains in quite some detail how the park works. But that's just what blows my mind is you've, you've used both mechanical and pneumatics together mm. to create this, is it five waves all around the, the plunger? It's the multiple peaks are around. Um, the five waves um, sort of comes from the five level. It's actually very, very different than, than what classically is known as a, a pneumatic caisson design. Even though the word pneumatic's in there, it's, it's actually nothing alike, really. The way we do it is, is not using um, pneumatics to motivate the lake water. We are using pneumatics in the more classic sense, um, such as a pneumatic piston, um, yep. uh, so air, uh, fluid power. Um, so that then takes away that grossly um, inefficient process and replaces it with one that's, you know, it's, it's kind of a very common system, just very big. 
What I'm very impressed about with this combined pneumatic and hydraulic system, which is shown to produce multiple peaks around the plunger, what this would mean is, rather than having individual settings per hour, surfers of all levels would be able to sit in a session with a pro surfer ripping on one end all the way to a beginner surfer learning on an easy wave. Now this sort of setup is seen at Urban Surf, but more for the whitewater waves in the bay for the learn to surf schools. The opportunities for a wave pool like Surf Lakes here become many, as the park can produce 14 waves per set, totaling to 70 waves per session, which will in turn maximize viability in the near future. I really look forward to seeing this prototype come off the ground into a commercial setting one day, as it would be really cool to see surfers of all levels in the pool at one time. Now whether you're a surfer or not, I really hope this video inspired you to get into the wave pool and give it a crack. Since I've been surfing at the beach up until now, the progression I've made is something I'm very proud of. Given I couldn't really do proper turns at the start of this video, and a few months later, I'm starting to get the hang of a few different maneuvers. And a big thank you to everyone for supporting us up to a thousand subscribers. Being only a small channel, this means we now get to expand our content into both project and engineering DIY projects to more videos like this that are educational, where we get to explain how complex technologies actually work and change the way we can do fun things like surfing.